Oh, when the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, oh, when they crown him Lord of Lords, when they crown him Lord of Lords, oh Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, help me, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, oh, one more time, oh, when the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Are you glad to be in the Lord's house this morning? Has the Lord been good to you this week? If you would, turn with me to 314. Yes, the blue. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day glorious day that will be I like this verse there'll be no sorrow there no more burdens to bear no more sickness no pain no more parting over there and forever I will be with the one who died for me what a day glorious day that will be oh what a day that will be when my jesus i shall see and i look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be hallelujah I'm looking forward to that day. How about you? Yes, hallelujah. My goodness, let's pray. Father, we love you, and we thank you for the privilege of being in your house today. Lord, thank you that you've made it possible for us to be here. Lord, thank you that all those that are here today have been spared by the grace of God, kept by the grace of God, and the needs supplied by the grace of God. Yes. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for that today. So, Lord, we gather in your presence to give you glory, to worship, to honor you, and to thank you. 
And, Lord, just to draw close to you. So, Lord, that's what we want to do. Help us to worship you this day in spirit and in truth. Yes. And, Father, I pray that you would have your way in us, in this place, this day. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Have a seat. Good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Uh, Our hallelujah celebration is rapidly approaching, so we need to be doing some setup for that. So Wednesday evening, we will be doing setup. Janie, where's Janie? There's a Janie. Janie, you want to say something about hallelujah? <laughs> yep, hallelujah is just around the corner, guys, and it's going to be amazing. It's to me, there's so much going on for the kids that the people, even though if that places have been decimated, that uh, they're doing stuff for the kids this year, trying to keep the communities, you know, going and everything. So we are too, but it's going to be at 430 to 7 this year. So pass the word. We need workers, guys. We need lots of workers. And, and it don't be maybe 30-minute things with games and just shift off with somebody. We need uh, cakes for the cakewalk. We need sweets and brownies and chips and stuff like that for um, the food. And anybody would like to make, we're doing three types of soups. We're doing vegetable, potato, and chili. So in that way, if any of the kids don't have food to take home, we're going to give them some to take home with them. So if you would be willing to make one of those three, let me know. We don't want to have an overabundance of one and not have the other two. So we're going to run a list. Hey, Nathan, it's good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need prayer, guys. I really think that now's the time, the harvest is getting ripe, and now's the time to reach these kids because a lot of them probably don't have what they used to have. So, and we have as much fun, the adults have as much fun as the kids do, so come out and toss a button or, you know, do different things. And if you'd like to donate to uh, the candy or anything to help get food, see cricket, Give it to her. And um, guys, I am begging. We need help. I'm thankful for Howard and Tammy. They have taken over the games this year, and they're going to be putting those out. Um, I get the wonderful privilege of buying the toys and the prizes, and I love it because I get to play with them first. <laughs> so I get to do that. So if anybody um, you want to help anyway, in any capacity, we need to move tables. We need to set up. But Sunday night, next Sunday night is, uh, well, okay, Wednesday night we're going to start, right? Okay, Wednesday night. If you could be here Wednesday night, we'll move tables and get everything set up so that we could start getting the games put out. And um, if you can make things like, uh, what else, Keisha, what else do we need? Sandwiches or? Yeah, um, <clears throat> <laughs> so if you can get any of that stuff that would be great and lots and lots of prayer okay oh okay thank you Janie five o'clock Wednesday and five o'clock next Wednesday we're going to need two nights uh, we didn't want to wait till the Wednesday night before. It's kind of hard to get everything done in one night. So this Wednesday at 5, next Wednesday at 5, and hopefully that will get us set up and ready to go. And here's your opportunity to do some ministry. 
You know, the Bible says that we're saved unto good works, and I can't think of anything better than ministering to these kids at a time when so many have lost so much. So let's, let's get together and let's see what God will do. All right, uh, any other announcements? All right. Okay. So take a shoe box and fill it up. Jeff? Amen. Yeah, Rachel Mahoney called, and she's saying the same thing. All righty, any other announcements? Yeah. Lucy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Any other announcements or prayer requests? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, got an email from Dave and Christy in Peru. It says, we continue to pray for Western North Carolina and the Burnsville community. It's hard to grasp the devastation. We continue to pray for everyone. Uh, I'm going to lift my hands and praise him. About 12 years ago, we helped open the boys' orphanage. Since we didn't have hot water, we would fill inner tubes with water, and the sun would heat them for warm baths for the kids by afternoon. Mm -hmm. We would share the love of Christ, talk about their Father in heaven. Thanks for your support. We rescue abandoned and forgotten children, and we lift our hands to praise him, Dave and Christy. So uh, continue to pray for them as they pray for us. Okay, anything else? All righty, could we have a couple of folks to receive the offering? Eddie, would you pray?
through it all oh i've learned to trust in jesus i've learned to trust in god through it all through it all oh i've learned to depend on his word through it all through it all i've learned to trust in jesus i've learned to trust in god through it all through it all oh i've learned to depend upon his word i've learned to depend upon his word we've said it so many times but we can't say it enough we have so much to be thankful for it's amazing what God has done in, for so many of us in so many different ways. So let's stand up and let's worship him this morning. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship Your holy name The sun comes up It's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship Your holy name You're rich in love And you're slow to anger Your name is great heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy Holy name, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship your holy name Bless the Lord Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my 
this morning to worship you and lord our worship of you does not depend on circumstances and situations lord it depends only on the fact that you are worthy you are worthy lord you're worthy you're worthy and lord i pray if if anything is accomplished in what has taken place that it causes us to turn our eyes to jesus more than we've ever done in the past turn our hearts Turn our hearts, Lord. Turn the hearts of this, this area, this state, this nation. God, turn our hearts to you. Lord, help, help this to bring repentance to this country. And Lord, a great move of God across this land. So Lord, I pray today, help all of us to set our focus on Jesus. Lord, we worship you and we praise you and we thank you. We love you, Jesus. Turn us this morning, Father. Turn my heart, oh Lord, like rivers of water.
turn our hearts, turn our lives until our name does bring honor to the Lamb of God. Lord, we, we think about what we've been through in this area. We think about the problems that we've had and then the problems that so many have had that are so, so much worse. We think about all the situation in our nation and the things that are happening around the world. And Lord, it's truly a sobering time. But, Lord, it's also a time for us to look up and lift up our heads because our redemption draws nigh. So, Lord, I pray that that would be our focus, that we would keep our eyes on Jesus and realize that we have a blessed hope, and we're so thankful for it today. Years of time have come and gone Since I first heard it told how Jesus would come back again someday and if back then it seemed so real I just can't help but feel how much closer is coming is today signs of the times are everywhere and there's a brand new feeling in the Some people doubt he'll ever come again. But the word of God is true. He will redeem his chosen few. Don't lose hope. Still Christ Jesus will descend. Signs of the times are everywhere. And there's a brand new feeling in the air. 
your eyes upon the eastern sky. Lift up your head, redemption draweth nigh. Lift up your head, redemption draweth nigh. Folks, Jesus is coming, Amen. and he's coming soon. Now, boy, I tell you, that's the blessed hope. That's the anchor for our soul. That's what sustains us and carries us through, and we're so thankful this morning. Lord, there's so much that so many need right now. Lord, the greatest thing that we all need is Jesus. Father, I pray for every one of us, every one of us, that, Lord, we will draw closer and allow more of you in our life. Lord, that we'll allow you in the areas that maybe we've restricted you from. Lord, I pray that multitudes that aren't right with you will become right with you. God, that's what we're asking for this morning. And that's what we need this morning. In the morning when I rise In the morning when I rise In the morning when I rise Give me Jesus Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, give me Jesus, and when I am alone, Lord. And when I come to die, oh, when I come to die, when I come to die, give me Jesus. Jesus, you can have all this world. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. You can have all this world. You can have all this world. Give me Jesus. Yes, Lord. That's what we need more than anything else. Because, Lord, in you, 
Every need will be supplied. Give us Jesus. Lord, we worship you today. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. And most of all, thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. From the word, I want to do something. I want to ask uh, David uh, Ford to come down here. I'm going to ask Sam Cox to come down here. I'm going to ask uh, Bob to come down here. And uh, we want to anoint these guys and pray for them. I know David's uh, in a lot of uh, pressure right now because of the deadline at Baxter. I know Sam's under a lot of pressure for the same thing because he has to make something that is very essential for Baxter. And Bob is waiting for uh, the results of some tests. Uh, I think all of us know that because of uh, an examination, they detected two tumors in his stomach. So he had some more tests, and he's waiting on the results for those. But we're going to anoint these and pray for them. Uh, Steve, would you come down, Fritz, if you don't mind joining us? Oh, that's right. Donald, come on down here. I know you're in the Baxter situation as well. Anybody else in here working Baxter? Okay. Uh, we want to pray for all these fellas this morning. Uh, you know, Baxter provides 80% of all IV solution. And uh, them being down is creating quite a, quite a situation in the medical profession. So these guys are the backbone. And uh, how many days are you think you're going to have to work in a row? 20-something? 20 28 days. That's what they're saying. Yeah. So, you know, they need a touch from God. Eddie, would you come down here and join us as we pray for these? All righty. We want to anoint them with oil in the name of Jesus and just ask you to agree in prayer with us. In this direction. Father, we come to you because of what your word said. That word says, prayer of faith will save the sick. That word says to anoint them with oil in the name of Jesus. The word says that those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as evil. They'll run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Father, today we believe that promise. We claim that promise for these that are working so hard to get uh, the medical facility back online. Father, we ask for supernatural strength. We ask that uh, the power of the Holy Spirit would just infuse them and give them the ability to do what they normally could not. I pray that you keep them strong, and I pray that you keep them sharp, and I pray that they not be fatigued or weary. Lord, you know, all of us have medical problems. Lord, you're the God that heals, and we ask you to do it. We also pray for Bob. He's waiting on those tests. Father, we pray for a good report. We pray that those reports would not show anything malicious. That those reports would be something to the glory of God. Father, we're asking for that this day. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you with any and everything in our life because you are concerned with everything in our life. Lord, the word says even the hairs of our head are numbered. A sparrow doesn't fall to the ground without your knowledge. So, Father, we pray that you would minister to them because you made them, you created them, you fashioned them. And all their members are written in your book. God, I pray that you would cause what is lacking to be there, heal what needs to be healed, replace what needs to be replaced, strengthen what needs to be strengthened. And, Lord, we'll give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. God bless you, fellas. Amen. Amen. We also want to remember Scott, who lives in the what was the previous parsonage up here. He had a heart attack. He's in the hospital. Be praying. We need to pray also for uh, Gary Miller. Libby and Gary are in Florida, and Gary is in the hospital with blood clots in his lungs. Uh, we, we need to pray for Lucy and all the other little ones that are having panic attacks and um, all the flood victims. But let's just do that right now. Father God, these we bring before you as well. Lord, we ask you to minister to Gary and Libby. Lord, we ask you to minister to Scott. Father, we pray for Lucy and all the, the little ones that are so stressed about what's going on right now. Not just the little ones, but the adults as well. Uh, Father, we just ask you to minister to them, to all the flood victims. And Lord, we lift hallelujah to you. And we pray that it would be a time of comfort and rejoicing and blessing for these that have gone through so much. So, Father, we praise you and thank you today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. All righty. Turn with me in your Bibles to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, I'm going to read verses 11 through 14. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, purifying himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Lord, give us ears to hear what you would have us to hear this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, you know, we, as we've said and said and said, God has blessed this, this church body tremendously. He's shown his mercy and his grace and the goodness of God. But like, like we know, we've been through a significant natural disaster. We're also just days away from an election and everybody, regardless of which side of the party you're on, uh, the slate you're on, is concerned about what's going to happen after that election, what, what the course of the nation is going to be. And, of course, as we know, if you've been able to look at the news, around the world there's multiple wars, any one of which could escalate into a global conflict. But here's the thing. As we read the accounts in the Gospels of what Jesus said would be happening just before his return, <laughs> it's all there. It's all there. You know, uh, he said we'd see violence and evil on the increased wars, rumors of wars, natural disasters, people li living in fear of what was coming on the earth. So every one of those things is there. So it's pretty obvious about the time we're living in. But here's something that Jesus said, Luke 21, 28. He said this, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. And that's God's word to his people today. It's time that we look up. You know, we, we've looked down now for a long time during these weeks since this disaster. That's where our focus has been. You know, this is gone. This is washed away. You know, this is this, <laughs> so much devastation, so much problem. And we're, we're looking down, but Jesus says it's time to look up. It's time to lift up your heads. We need to change our focus. We need to set our eyes on heaven and the promises that God's given us and what's in store for every child of God. You know, when we're sad, when we're troubled, our heads tend to hang down. But Jesus just says it's time to hold your head up. The reason is it's because of who you are. Because of who you are. If you're, if you're saved, you're a born-again child of, uh, of the king. And not just the king, but the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's who you are. You've been purchased. You've been redeemed from Satan. You, you now belong to Jesus. Your debt's been paid. Your sins are forgiven and forgotten. Uh, for you, death has been conquered. You've been given eternal life. There's a place prepared for you in heaven. There's an inheritance reserved for you in the Father's house that will not diminish and it will not pass away. There's a position in God's kingdom that's reserved for you and you're living, you will be living in fullness of joy and health and purpose and because of your redemption, and because your redemption draws nigh. And that word that's translated redemption means this. It means your release, your deliverance, your liberation, and your freedom. 
Can you imagine what it's going to be like to be free from all the stuff in this world? All the aches and pains, all the sorrow, all the disappointment, all the evil, in the injustice and the things that we have to face as we live through this life. Think about being free from that. Think about being delivered from that. Think about being released from all that and going to a place, going to a place where there's fullness of joy and at his right hand pleasure forevermore. Think about that. Yes. No wonder he said, look up, lift up your heads. Your redemption's drawing nigh. Everything says that it is. It's time that God's people rejoice. Yes, if we have Jesus, if we have Jesus, he's all we need. That's what we need to do. We've got to keep our eyes on what God's promised. We've got to keep our eyes on what's in store for us. The world wants to rob you of your joy. The Bible says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life. Yes. You ain't got it in this world. This is just, you know, this is boot camp. This is like going through the, 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 the wilderness, and that's what we're in. We're in a wilderness in this world because the, the prince of this age is running the show on this earth. But thank God, if you're a child of God, you've been delivered from that. You're no longer a citizen of the kingdom of darkness. You're a citizen of heaven. That's what's in store for every child of God. And that's what our focus has to be on. Look up and lift up your heads. That redemption is nearer than when you first believed. That redemption is nearer than you can even imagine. That redemption is at the door. Think what he said. And when you see these things begin to come to pass, think about how long this has been going on. Then look up and lift up your heads. Your redemption draws nigh. It's close. It's at the door. It's at the door. You know, <clears throat> uh, it's, it's awfully easy to get pulled down in this world if our focus is in the wrong place. But you and I, you and I need to be like Paul after he had been on a sinking ship for two weeks in a storm. Can you imagine what that would be like? My goodness. They said they hadn't seen the moon or the sun or stars in days and days and days. Two weeks. Two weeks inside something that would be like a hurricane for us. Can you imagine what it would have been like if that hurricane had lasted two weeks? Lord, I can't begin to imagine. So Paul is on this ship, and they've been in this storm for two weeks. But the Bible says he was of good cheer. Let me read this to you. This is Acts 27, verses 23 through 25. He said, There stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given you all them that sail with you. And then Paul says to the people around him, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. I believe what God's told me. I believe that my redemption is drawing near. I believe Jesus is coming. I believe the promises of God that he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. Folks, listen, we got a place prepared. Your name's on the door up there. There's an inheritance reserved for you. And it's close. It's close. So Paul said, you know, <laughs> yeah, we're on this ship. It's falling apart. Let me tell you something. We're on a ship right now that's falling apart. This world's coming unglued at the seams. But the good news is this. The ship that we're on as a child of God is unsinkable. And it's going to come into port. And we're going to be holding our heads up and shouting the praises of God. We're going to go home, children. This ain't it. We're going there. We're going there. I may preach this morning. I don't know. What do you think? Reckon I ought to. This world is falling apart. Paul's on this ship. 276 people on the ship. They've been in a storm for two weeks. Haven't seen anything but horrible wind and weather and tremendously high waves. Everybody has lost all hope. And Paul gets up one morning and said, let me tell you, I'm in a good mood today. Because I got a word from God. Yes. Let me tell you, if you're a child of God, you had a word from God. You know what it was? John 3, 16. 
<laughs> for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the word from God. Now, I believe that word. And the Bible says if you'll believe that word, you'll be saved. I'm not going down with this ship. I'm going up with a different ship. Because I believe the word from God. And the reason Paul could be happy in this mess, he believed the word that God gave him. God said, you ain't going to drown. You got to go talk to Caesar. You got to tell him people in Rome about the good news that Jesus saves. God forgives. Hallelujah. And he said, not only that, I'm going to give you all these other prisoners that's with you. So be of good cheer. Paul said, I believe it. God told me, and I believe it. In an absolutely hopeless situation, Paul would be of good cheer because he believed what God had told him. And you know what? Good cheer is contagious. It is. Depression is too. The sorrow of this world will destroy you. But we need to be the people of good cheer. Listen, listen, listen to this. This is Acts 27, 35, and 36. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread, <clears throat> and he gave thanks to God in the presence of all of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. You see, when people see you joyful in the midst of a mess, they're going to want to know what's going on. They want to know why that is. Because, folks, listen, people want something that they can hope in, something to give them some hope. And if they see you with hope, then they want to know what it is because they want some too. They want some too. Because if, if you will, if in, that, in difficult situations, and now is a wonderful time for that to take place, if they see you thanking God and they hear you declaring the promises of God, Many are going to listen and believe and rejoice. And I know from experience because that's what happened to me. I was going through a miserable time in my life. I was going through a hopeless time in my life. And I, God was not, was not my, uh, my anchor. I was as lost as a goose. And somebody I was working with was going through some hard times and yet still as joyful as you could imagine. And I kept watching him, and I said, I want to know what kind of dope you're taking because I need some of it. He said, Doc, got, I ain't got no dope, but I got Jesus. Oh, yeah. I said, oh, Lord, don't start that. I've heard it all my life. He said, that's the problem. You've just heard it. You, you ain't had it. <laughs> and I watched him for a pretty good while. I was, I was a tough case. But I saw him walk through a miscarriage. With his, you know, with his wife, they'd been trying to have a child. I watched him go through car wreck. Came in one morning, he'd totaled his car out, and he was whistling and rejoicing. I said, are you crazy? He said, just about Jesus. I'm thinking, oh, Lord, this man is a certified nut. But I watched him long enough, and I realized I needed what he had. And that's what happened to me. We've got to rejoice. We've got to rejoice when we're going through hard times because it's contagious. It'll change the lives of people around you. The Bible tells us that those on the ship with Paul had been in that storm so long that all hope was lost. And folks, a lot of people in this world have lost hope. Young people have lost hope. They don't see a future. They don't see anything that is promising for them. But God tells us that we have to live by hope. Titus 2.13, listen. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Folks, hope's what keeps us alive. People without hope are suicidal. That's why, that's why it happens. One of the saddest stories I heard come out of this, this devastation is there was a couple that when all this hit, they thought they'd never be rescued and they took their own lives. 
when you lose hope, you've lost it all. We're saved by hope. Listen, Romans 8, 24 and 25. For we're saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. When the ship was really falling apart that Paul was on, the Bible says the Roman soldiers decided they were going to kill all the prisoners because they were afraid some of them might actually escape. And if a Roman soldier allowed a prisoner to escape, he forfeited his life. So they were going to wipe out all these prisoners. But, <laughs> but because of the hope that Paul had, their lives were spared. That's the power of hope. And if you've got hope, you can make it through. If you have no hope, you've not got a chance. So everybody has to have something that they can hope in. You know, a lot of people right now are placing all their hope in their presidential candidate. Let me tell you something. Your presidential candidate ain't saving this country. There's only one that can. His name is Jesus. That's where your hope's got to be. It does matter what you vote for because we have to vote along biblical principles if we're a child of God. But folks, let me tell you, that person's not going to save the country. If this country is saved, if it's turned around, it's going to be because the king of glory did it. And that's what we need to be praying for. We need to be interceding that almighty God in his mercy and his grace is going to pour out repentance across this nation and there will be a mighty turning back to God. That's the hope. But we've got that hope because we have a king that's able to do that. It happened in Elijah's day. It happened in Nineveh. I mean, their sentence was written out. Forty days, you're toast. But God sent Jonah. Had a little difficulty doing that because Jonah didn't want to go. And I can't blame him because nobody wanted to be around those Ninevites. They, they love to destroy the Jewish people. But you know what? God is merciful. He's merciful to the just and the unjust. He came to seek and to save sinners of whom I am chief. And if it were not for God's mercy and God's grace, I wouldn't be here today. But God can do the same thing in this nation that he did in Israel with Elijah. He can do the same thing in this nation as he did with Jonah in Nineveh. God can do it again. Yes. That's what we've got to pray for. God, do it again. Change the course of a nation. He can. We're saved by hope. There's power in hope. We have to live by hope, and we have to let it show. 1 Peter 3.15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. When we are going through tough times, instead of just agreeing with everybody else on how horrible it is and just focusing on how much it's been devastated, you and I need to be saying, well, yeah, it's a tough time, but let me tell you something. There's a better day coming. There's a, there's, a, there's a great rescue that's about to take place. There's a massive move from this earth to heaven, and it's going to be soon because the Word of God tells me what's going to be going on when it's time for that to happen, and I can see it going on right now. And let me tell you something. You can be in on this. Let me tell you how you can get out of this place and go to a place that's beyond description that's wilder than you can even imagine. It's awesome. It's wonderful. Come on, go with me. Yes. That's where my hope's at this morning. We got to look up and lift up our heads. Our redemption's drawing near. That's where we're at today. That's what we've got to be doing. That's what we've got to be doing. If somebody says, "What? tell me about this hope that you've got. Why are you this way? How can you be like this in this time when we've lost so much? Well, here's the thing. Let me give you the good news. You see, that's what the gospel is. That's the literal translation of the, of the word gospel or the Greek word that's used translated gospel. It means good news. And we've got to be those that bear good news. Jesus said, go into all the world and bring good news. Preach the gospel. That's bringing good news. So you and I have got to be those that are bringing the good news. Instead of adding more gloom, doom, and despair, we've got to say, listen, 
I have some of the most awesome news, and I want to tell you what it is. They're going to listen. It's a time when people need some good news. Here's the good news. All of sin that comes short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. What's good about that? Well, that's kind of like the world. It's in that kind of shape. But here's the good news. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus. Oh, my. <laughs> sin, death, but God. But God. He sent Jesus to this world. Listen to what he did. Titus 2.14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify in himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. God used the prophet Hosea to show an object lesson. God spoke to Hosea one day and he said, I want you to do something that's going to sound strange. Hosea said, yeah, what is it? He said, I want you to go marry this woman that's got the worst reputation in town. I'm sure Hosea jumped out up and down and said, yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about. He said, I want you to go get them. She's wild as a spider. And that's, that part's not in the Bible. That's just, that's the gospel according to David. So he goes and marries Gomer. And things go pretty good for a while. She had, buries him a son and a daughter and another son. It's looking good. And then, lo and behold, psh, takes off with some other guy. God spoke to Hosea. I want you to keep loving her, and I want you to go get her back. <laughs> Hosea, I'm thinking, what? So he does. He goes to the fellow that she's living with, and he buys her 15 pieces of silver, five bushels of barley, and he purchases her, brings her back to the house, and he says this, you're mine. I have purchased you. And you're going to be faithful to me, and I'm going to be faithful to you. And you see, that's what God's done for us. We've been unfaithful. We've, we've gone our own direction. We've done things that are against his will. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus came, and he goes, and he purchases us back from the devil. And he pays in his own blood, the Bible says. And he's redeemed us. And he says the same thing. Listen to me. You're mine. I've bought you. The Bible says, no, you're not that you're the tabernacle. Your body is the tabernacle of God, and you're not your own because you're bought with a price. And we're in that same situation. God has purchased us. We belong to him. We're his. And he says, listen to me. You're going to be faithful to me, and I'm going to be faithful to you. Think about it. That's what Jesus has done for every one of us, every one of us. God still loves us. Even though through all the sin, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he paid the ultimate price to deliver us, to redeem us, to set us free, to become his. It's interesting, you know, that scripture says, he gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. And if you look that word up, the Greek word's only used one time in the Bible in this one place. And here's what it means. It means one's own, one's possession, something special. Do you know you're special to God? You are something special to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you're his. You're, you're his possession because he bought you. If you've asked Jesus Christ to forgive your sin and be your Savior, you are the property of God. And you're special. You're like nobody else. You're unique. In the eyes of God. And he loves you. And he says, you be faithful to me. I'm going to be faithful to you. Hmm. My, my, my. So let me read this, these two verses, and then we'll, then we'll wrap it up today. Titus 2, verses 12 and 13. Here's how we should live in this world. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. If you look at that, that word un ungodliness means a lack of reverence for God. We're to be a people who reverence Almighty God, reverence the name of Jesus Christ. And then it says, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. 
And that literally means a desire for something that God forbids. We have to be careful about what we're really living for and what we're wanting in our life. We should live soberly. It means with a sound mind, righteously, in agreement with what's right, and godly, right with God. And we live looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So here's the thing. You and I have got to live looking up. And we can't let our heads be hanging down because everybody's going to think, what's the matter with you? And you're just as bad off as I am. Folks, <laughs> we're sinners, but we're saved by grace. We, are, we have every reason, every reason to rejoice and praise God. You know, we, we praise him for, for surviving this catastrophe. We praise him that we still have houses to live in. We praise him that, you know, most of our power has been restored. We praise him that we've got a, a church to come to, a church building to come to, and that we've got lights, and we've got running water, and we've got restrooms, we've got the things that we need. But we praise him most of all for the blessed hope of his glorious appearing. We praise him most of all that we can be a born-again child of God destined to rule and reign with him and live eternally in fullness of joy. That's what we praise him for. That's what we praise him for. So keep your eyes on that blessed hope because that hope is an anchor. That hope is what gives you comfort. That hope is your witness. And remember, your redemption draws nigh. So, folks, let's look up and let's rejoice because soon and very soon we're going to see the king. And we're going to be changed, transformed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And this corruption will put on incorruption. This mortal will put on immortality. And we're going to be changed to be like him. Our, our new body is going to be fashioned like his glorious body. The Bible says because we will see him as he is. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that. But it's coming, and it's coming soon. So look up and lift up your heads, because it's near. Let's pray. Father, I'm so thankful for what you have shown us and given us. I'm so thankful for the goodness of God, and I'm so thankful for the grace of God manifest in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we could, we could look back at the Scripture and, Lord, we can see that Jesus loved us so much that he came, that he gave himself for us, that he, he delivered us from the power of darkness. He redeemed us from all iniquity. He purified us unto himself. And we are that peculiar people, that purchased people, that personal property of the King of kings and Lord of lords, and we're special in his sight. God, I'm so thankful today. So, Lord, today I pray that you would help your people to hold up their heads, to rejoice, to look up, to keep our eyes on that blessed hope. And, Lord, if there's anybody here today that doesn't have that hope, that doesn't have that anchor for their, for their soul, I pray that this would be the very moment that they would realize that need as never before, that they would realize how fleeting the things of this world are, how easily they're taken away from us. And I pray that this would be the moment that they would just pray that simple prayer. The Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And I pray that today they would call on the name of Jesus and say, Lord, I need that hope. I need to know that I'm your property. I need to know that I'm going to spend eternity with you. And regardless of what happens in this world, I have one, a better one coming and it's near. I confess that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And I ask Jesus Christ to forgive my sin and be my Savior, and I surrender my life to him. Lord, save me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And Lord, I want to live with that hope. Lord, I know this. The good news is, if they'll ask, they'll receive. Because, Lord, your word's true, and I believe your word. And Lord, I have hope today because like Paul, I believe what God has said. And if we believe it, we're a people of hope 
and we need to share that hope with a lost and dying world. Father, thank you for this time together today. Lord, I ask you to, this, for this congregation, I, bless, I ask you to bless them and keep them, to cause your face to shine upon them and be gracious to them. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. Go with us now and help us to be a people that shows forth the glory of God and holds our head up and live in that blessed hope. Go with us now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you. As you stand this morning, look at somebody and say, I have hope and I'm rejoicing today because of God's goodness. Remember.